Amen. How about standing? I remain standing just for a moment. Great to have Pastor Sergey uh, in the house tonight. And um, there you go. Actually, um, he's never preached in this church before, but um, is already well loved in this church. Um, because of what he's been doing in the Ukraine, where he is from over the last couple of years. Great to have his son, uh, Michael, with us as well tonight. And um, Pastor Sergei is an amazing man. We connected um, during the time when um, the war in the Ukraine broke out. And we were looking to see as a church, what could we do? How could we help uh, people on the ground that were in need? And through a mutual friend, we connected with Pastor Sergei. Uh, started to hear the testimonies of what he was doing. And um, he might share a little bit tonight. I'll just share a little thing. Uh, one of the things they were discovering at that time was entire homes were just being bombed out and people had nowhere to live. And so um, Pastor Sergei found a way of converting containers into small homes to give people uh, shelter and security where they had absolutely nothing. And uh, in that time, I just talked to him this morning, um, he has helped to oversee over 320 homes uh, be positioned in, in and around his area. And he's got a vision to keep on going for a few more. And he's got a massive heart for people. He loves people, uh, doing an amazing job of taking pe uh, care of people in the Ukraine. And it's been a real pleasure to get to know him. Uh, him and his family have been to Shout for the last couple of years. He was with us in New Zealand just a few months ago at Shout down there. And a great honor to have you here tonight, Pastor Sergey. We're so glad to have you here. He's going to be preaching tonight, not in his first language, not in his second language. He's, I, he's gonna, I can't speak in a third language. He's going to be preaching tonight in his third language, which is pretty amazing. So can you give him a huge welcome as Pastor Sergei comes to speak tonight? Woo! It's on, right? Yeah, please be seated, you know. I don't know what's the right way to say it. Uh, so what I have figured out that youth and people after 40 have different perspective of looking at things. So I told my son, Misha, Misha, I like Pastor Mark heart. And he said, I like his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second thing that we try to understand with Misha, but I like the sense of it. When Pastor Mark says Tuesday, we hear shoes day. And I said, you know, they probably need a lot of shoes coming to help. So maybe it is a shoes day and you can come and help. It would be really cool to see so many shoes there working to help that whole thing to be done, right? So let's do shoes day. Yes. Okay. So before I go anywhere, uh, I know that my church is looking at me right now online. And I want to say something in Ukrainian to them. Would you mind? Друзі, я вас дуже люблю, і я хочу вам сказати, що ви мої герої. Віка, я тебе люблю, Давід, я тебе люблю, Глорія, я тебе люблю. До зустрічі, і моя команда, я вам дуже пишаюсь. Амінь. Thank you. So, since I'm getting a little bit older, I will need my glasses. This is my first sermon with glasses. <laughs> that it's way easier <laughs> when I talk to my son and he he shows me man what did you do with my computer Misha can you open this <laughs> I'm so sorry you know those technologies they are crazy you know I grew up when we when we read Bible I mean pages and we wrote sermons pages but now I have figured out that it's hard to read and hard to write, and it's hard even to put on my telephone and find it where I wrote it. <laughs> so it's quite interesting. Okay. So what I want to share today, I want to, I want to, some of the pictures to come over here because this is the price. This is the price. 320 hope homes. Let's give B claps, to Jesus. It's an amazing. It's an amazing. Jesus, we want to thank you for your church all over the world standing behind and helping Ukraine. Amen. So when we place our 100 homes, so this is my village. This is less than one mile, oh, less than half a mile from my house. So the Russian missile 
fell down and destroyed homes. And this is the house, and I told that story, that a little cat saved a man's life. Because we've been praying, Jesus, we pray that you would save people. So the missile that was, that was uh, falling on, the, on, a, on, a, on that place, it actually destroyed houses. So four houses, the same like that, and, and they are really, uh, really broken. So, and, and uh, the first thing I asked everybody, has anyone died? And they said, no one died, no one died. And I'm like, praise you, Jesus. No one died. Houses destroyed, people saved. Because our prayer matters. Our prayer matters. Even if you say, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm not much in the church. But you know what? If you pray and ask Lord with, with, a, with a heart, with a passion, it matters. It matters. It's not about you. It's about where you sending your prayer. Amen. Because, you know, one lady who, who reached Jesus, he was, she was not worthy to touch Jesus. She was bleeding. She was not supposed to touch anybody. But she made a decision. If I reach his clothes, I'll be healed. So that's what, that's what your prayer is. You, you, you need to be bold in your prayers when you pray for something. You have to be strong in your prayers. And so this thing, you know, this is, this is the death. This is like, you can see death. This is the manifestation of death. But our prayers is manifestation of life. Can you show a second picture? So, the, so we brought them tiny homes. And they all live in tiny homes right now. It's the four houses destroyed. All of them alive. Because we've been praying. And they now live in those homes. Okay, let's do the second thing. So then we started a church. So we had 100 homes and, and uh, you know, you, you, like if you're a pastor inside or you somehow connected with the church, you understand that the home group is really important thing. So you better be at your home group all the time. Don't miss that, that wonderful time when you connect with your guys and girls. So we wanted to start a home group for these people. But so we started a home group and then we have 40 people sitting in a room and all new Christians. All these grandmas from those tiny homes. We invited them. We say, come on, we will teach you about Jesus. The reason why we're here, because his name is Jesus. That because, because he brought us here. So we started to bring them to home group. And then the home group became, you know, a little more than a home group. And, and we felt like, Lord, start, start a church. Buy a land. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. Well, we should say yes. If you say buy a land, I will say yes. It's hard to say yes sometimes because you start to calculate. And you know what? Switch off your calculator. Switch it off. Take batteries out. Because it's not being charged by you. It's being charged by him. Okay? And the, the most interesting thing, that the word that you hear right now, you hear from a poor country and not from a rich country. But from a rich king and not from a poor king. You know, he's a rich king. And if he says something, it doesn't matter how much it is. You better do it. So when he told us to build this church, I was like, yeah, I will say yes, but only one condition. Can I say one condition to heaven? And I felt like the Lord said yes. I said, can it be like easy? <laughs> can it be easy? You know, and every pastor, they have this pressure how to build a church because they calculate, praise God, my calculator was shut down by, you know, Russian soldiers somewhere. I don't know. Something happened with my calculator. It didn't count. I was like, Jesus here, Jesus there, Jesus everywhere. Let's do it. <laughs> so, so we built the church, and, and uh, when we built this church, no, wait, 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 wait. That's the second church. We don't go there yet. So <laughs> we built this church, and uh, so we started to invite people to this church. You know, all these container, we call them container homes. So container people, they started to come to this church. My team did an incredible work. They've been putting those container homes. They've been working with people. I mean, I own of those, those brave men and women of God who stayed with me during the war. And they've been helping feeding people in, in the underground. So we, we did just the same as, as you read in a story how people were hiding in underground during the Second World War when London was bombed and people were hiding underground. Same thing happened in Ukraine. Same thing. So my team did a great job. I'm, I really, I'm very, very thankful. I would not be able to do anything without my team, okay? No one can. No one. And when you hear what we have done, 
please see not just me. See the team and see the churches and see the donors that have been faithfully giving for this whole thing to happen. It's above $1.5 million. That's Jesus. So when, uh, I mean, millions are not Jesus. I mean, that's Jesus who gave it, okay? So when you see this church, when you, so we built this church, and then I remember when we had the church opening, and uh, it, was, it was, you know, cold season are coming. We live in a cold part of the world. So we can have minus 32 degrees Celsius, really cold. You know, you can't spit. <laughs> and you don't want to pee. <laughs> yeah, you laugh at it, but I will tell you, a lot of our women and men, they have toilets outside of the house. And they don't want to go. <laughs> so this is like, this is how bad it can be. And I, and I thought, well, if Russia will continue to destroy our electric companies, we need to do something. And we started to think and praise God for university called YouTube. So you can look at the YouTube and see how to do something, you know, how you can use alternative methods of heating floor and so on. So we, I mean, I'm not an engineer, but I looked at the some things and I said, we're going to do a heating floor system. So that people from those container homes, in case if there is no electricity, they will be able to come to our church and sleep on the floor on mattresses. And we have mattresses. So all these people that are part of this church, they know that mattresses are there in case if there is no electric power, they can come and church will be warm. Because we have a, a wooden stove and a huge collector for water. So the, the wooden stove gives, you know, heat to water and then pumps circulate water in a in a floor and it's perfect it's like africa yeah let's go forward and then then uh pastor simon from flensburg he invited me to come and speak at his church and uh, it was april this year so i went to to his church and i spoke at his church and i'm very thankful to equip us in general you guys are very generous people this church the last pictures of of this um uh, presentation you will see what you have done but it's more than just that pictures you've been with us all these what two and a half years so far Andrew when did you guys came what was it okay yeah but but six months before that you sent us money so we were able to buy those container homes as well so you guys are there this is part of your history already part of your story so please adopt it. It's not there, it's here. <laughs> so when, uh, when, the, uh, when I was in Flensburg and after the sermon, I'm coming back to my hotel room and suddenly Jesus, boom, hits me and he says, you're going to build a second church. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> okay. And he says, it's going to be a real containers. I said, okay. So this is real containers, a shipping containers. And you know, they are 12 meters wide, which I would, I don't know what it is in, in, but from here to that, man, can you wave? Yeah, a little further. So next roll after you. So that's one container, 2.4, and then 12 meters, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's only half, so to the, to the, to the wall, and another container. So that's another church. And we have, that's, that's that church. And we are building that church. This is like the beginning of the building. Can you? Put on next. So this is this is two days ago. We are insulating already a church, and we're getting ready. I believe, I believe by God's grace, we will finish it to the end of this year. That's by God's grace. And I tell you, I asked the Lord, how are we gonna do it? You know, when He told me about Second Church, I said, how are we gonna do it? And He said, call to this lady. Her name is Dar. Tell her. And I'm calling this lady that, you know, you don't like somebody calling you and telling you, hey, hello, uh, here's the, God told me to tell you and, and, <laughs> and put all responsibility. No, 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 no. But she said, let me pray. And she prays and she says, you know, my father turns 80 years old this year. And I want to, like, I really feel Lord on what you said. Because my, past, my, my dad was a pastor and his desire was always to build churches. And he told me when I was a kid, he said, Dar, when I will be old and retired, we will build churches. And he got in a car accident. So he's, he's in a wheelchair. He can't build. He's a builder. And she said, I want to dedicate that whole thing to his birthday, to his 80th birthday. And we need $80,000. So she is 
telling, telling a thousand people to buy one brick for eighty dollars, and that's how that church is growing. That's how that church is growing. So, about two weeks ago, I, I was visiting the United States. I was visiting Dar and her father, and her father now is fighting with cancer. He recently found it, and I'm like, how? How time is important. How time is important that Lord just gave that full honor to this man before he goes to heaven. There is a, his purpose of life is fulfilled. Okay, so I, I I will start preaching now. You can turn. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The next the next one. It's a Kuipers. Okay, so you see your sign right there. It's blue. I don't know if, if your colors are blue, but you can see. You know. So we tried our best. Can you do the second one? So these kids are from Hostomel which was occupied by Russian uh, army. And that school, Russians used that. So we're in a school now, right? So Russian used that school as a military base. They went to toilet inside in the every class. And they wrote on each board how they hate Ukraine. And kids in that school, they received boxes from you guys with every single box saying how much you love them. Okay? This is what you did. This is what your kids did. 100 kids have received those boxes. Let's keep doing good works. You know, Bible says that we, our light should shine so when people see it, they start to praise Father. Right? I don't know the, the, the exact translation because I know them, I memorize them in Russian and then I have to translate them to Ukrainian and then I have to translate them to English. It's too hard, but you know what I'm talking about. So the whole idea is when you do good things, you don't need to evangelize. Because what I have figured out, when I do good things, people start to put crosses and praise God before I tell them about Jesus. That's what happened with all those grandmas. I come to them, we give them house, and they start to put crosses, orthodox crosses. And they say, you're my angel, praise God. I'm like, listen, I'm pastor, you listen. <laughs> but it doesn't work. They tell me more about God than I tell them. And that's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, good. Done. Boom. Let's go. <laughs> well, so I want to thank you guys for standing with us. And I want to, because I'm coming back to Ukraine. This is my last time when I was able to leave Ukraine. Because by Ukrainian law, only when you have children under age 18, three children under age 18, you are free to travel, you can leave a country, you can apply for a refuge status, you can build your life somewhere, and so on. We didn't feel like Lord is telling us to do it. We felt like Lord wants us to be in Ukraine. And uh, <clears throat> so my son just turned 18. This is my last time when I left Ukraine. So I'm doing this big travel. I've been to New Zealand, to United States. Now I'm here. Then I'll go back to Poland again, and I, and I have another two uh, countries I will visit, Holland and Denmark, and Belgium, third one. So, and, um, so basically, I'm here to, to ask you, please don't forget me and my churches and his bride that is in Ukraine. Okay? I know that he will not, but he also wants to encourage you as well. Okay. So I want to talk right now about example, being an example. So it is very important for us as a Christians to be an example. I know that we have so many phrases saying, be yourself, be who you want to be, feel like you want to feel, and blah, 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 blah. But that doesn't go with the Bible. It doesn't really say in the Bible. If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Let's just put that word young, change it to Christian, change it to different nationalities, change it to whatever. Just don't build your feelings on how people look at you. Okay? Don't build your self-esteem on what people say you are. This is a very interesting time. I tell you one thing. You can live in a country with peace and have war in you. And you can live in a country with a war and have peace in you. So this is what we have chosen. You always have choice. Always. Jesus has been teaching me many times. You all have, always have choice. Even when temptation is right here, close your eyes. 
you still have a choice to close your eyes. So you always have to have choice. So choose, choose to feel wonderful. Doesn't matter at what stage of life you are. Okay, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Not just for believers, but for your family, for your nation, for people around you, for your neighbors, for other countries. And I want to let you know that God is not happy when, he, when you come and say, I feel like I want to feel. He's happy when you say, I want to feel like Jesus feels. I want to think like Jesus thinks. So this is a really important thing because this is like, um, how do you call those lights in the ocean? Oh, not in ocean, outside of ocean so the ships can go and find the, the light, the way. Lighthouse. So you, sometimes we have to figure out what is our perspective? What is our lighthouse? What are we, what are we kind of concentrated on? So for some people, lighthouse is feel like you want to feel. And they direct their life to absolute nonsense, to absolute no order, no, no discipline, nothing. They just go wherever they want. But Jesus says, set up your lighthouse being an example for those who follow you. Be an example for those who follow you. This is a really word from the Lord. We have to understand that we need to become an example as a believers. People around us, they will look at us and they say, what it is that is so special about you? It's Jesus. Why do you love your wife? It's because of Jesus. Why do you not swearing or saying some other words? Because of Jesus. Because the Bible says you have to be an example to believers in your speech. And I'm not talking about sermon. It's everyday talking life. Everyday speaking. Everyday whatever you do, you have to be an example. When I speak to my wife, even when we have conflicts, I am setting up an example for him. How he will make his conflicts happening among him and his wife. Well, you remember kids don't do what you tell them to do, but they do what you did. Is that right? So we are at some point responsible, and we, go, we will come back to the word responsible. We are responsible for those things. To set up an example as believers in our speech, in conduct, in good works. Right? In good works. Bible says, let your light shine. Good works. When was the last time you did something good? Better than ordinary good. Is there something the Lord been telling you to do something, but you for always be and you forget about those things? Would you please sit down and pray and ask, Lord, is there something I need to reach? You know, just two days ago, I've been, I've been praying in my room, and Lord said, stop. I was praying tongues. I was praying, you know, you know, all that wonderful things that we do to heat up all these muscles, Christian muscles, you know. And then... And then Lord just puts me down on the floor. And he says, listen, this lady that you promised to help to build a house, they are lacking the, 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 uh, the plywood. So I call her and I say, what do you need? She said, plywood. I said, how many? She said, 13, 13 sheets. I said, good. What else? She said, uh, timber, timbers, timbers. I said, good. How many? 25. Good. What else? Uh, foam. I don't, that's the, the building foam. I don't know how you call those. You know, it's too difficult for me. <laughs> I said, sure. I called my friend and I said, can you drive that? Can you buy that? We will send money and can you bring it to her? Yes. And I feel like Jesus said, well done. Well done. Jesus wants us to be his hands and everything. Okay, let me talk right now with the word responsibility. I have, I've been just, you know, messing yesterday up with my chat GPT to understand where the responsibility word comes from. You know, I made his brain working hard. It was, it was Greek, 
it was Latin, it was English, it was Jewish, it was all Jewish, it was whatever languages we could find. And I tell you now with a confident answer, the word responsibility is two words together in English, response and ability. It comes from a Latin word, response and ability. You becoming an able by law to bring answer to the questions the world has. Okay? Not me. I know there's so many Christians they say, Lord, Lord, here I am. Send him. <laughs> Blessings are here, work there. So Tuesday needs to become shoes day. Right? Yes, we are. We love worship. I love worship. I love everything. But when my hands become dirty, that doesn't look spiritual. And I tell you one day, I remember when, when, um, when we were working in, um, in one village, Azara, which was damaged and everything. We've been fixing this roof. I mean, we're all tired. We're all dusty. You know, you look like a, like a coal man. You know, those who, who've been working in a, in a mine. Oh, new word, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, because mine is something that blows up. That's what I know. Dangerous mines, you know. Is that the same word? No? Okay. Is it? Same word, different Oh, same word, different meaning. Interesting. Well, you see? Yeah. So, a little PTSD right here. Okay. <laughs> so, but, but the thing is, we are working there for unbeliever guy who, you know, who tells us what to do and we're helping. And then you see these beautiful Christians with a tie and Bible. They look so spiritual that I wanted to throw my hammer into them. <laughs> I'm like, why are you there and not here? And they sit and they talk and I'm, and I'm praying. I said, Jesus, what's wrong? What's wrong with the church? Church needs to be like this. It should be shoes day, shoes Wednesday, shoe whatever Friday, shoe, you know. And the sh shun day, sh Sunday, you know. <laughs> I don't know what language it is, that's my fifth language. <laughs> but the whole idea that church needs to shine bright. Like a, there's a song, shining, na, 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 like a, yeah, you know the song, right? So you can add it. <laughs> Because I don't want to spend my time on singing. But the whole idea is that Lord been teaching us that gospel doesn't need a lot of words. When it needs to be spoken, it will be spoken shortly but strongly. All of them got saved. You know how? Because we've been helping all those people. And then one day I said, hey, listen, can we do a big lunch over here? We'll bring everything and we want to tell you why we do what we do. And they said, sure, let's do it. So we brought them all together in one of the homes that we've been fixing. We've made a big food table feast. And I tell them, you know, Jesus loves you. All of them cry, repent, beautiful. Oh, we were nice looking at that moment. We were well sweat, dirty t-shirts, but beautiful Jesus. Okay, that's how, you know, that's how it shines. And I tell you, they have accepted Jesus, not because we were in ties and nice looking guys. Just because they saw how we love them. So the word responsibility comes from, the, from, from an interesting understanding. You are able to bring response. Okay, not he is able not she is able, but the one who takes, do not receive, but takes responsibility. Okay? We always wait for somebody to give us responsibility, but that's not responsibility. It's an order. Okay? But if you want to become mature Christians, you, Christian, you need to be an answer to a need you see. So the Jewish word for responsibility has understanding what is after. It's after. So who are you after the problem? Are you hiding or are you running to help? Are you answering or are you becoming a question? 
You know, for those who are not married, you need to marry only people who can answer your questions. So, for example, for girls, they ask a question, hey, who's going to love me when I'm 45? Who's going to love me when I'm 65? Who's going to love me when I'm 85? And the guy has an answer, and he says, me. I am taking responsibility for your life. I am your response. I'm your answer to your questions. I'm able to love you when you're 45, when you're 65, when you're 95, when you're... I'm able. When you have teeth, when you don't... <laughs> Keep your teeth. Okay. It's much better to kiss someone with teeth. Never tried to kiss anybody without key, teeth. <laughs> but I think it's not that tasty. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so in Ukrainian, what responsibility means the one who is an answer for a long period of life, like long period of life. In Russian, what responsibility means the one who becomes a nature of answer. What a beautiful word. What a beautiful word. Jesus is the word, right? You are the word too, because you're made in his image. Just a smaller one, okay? So the, word, the response is actually a spoken sentences. Okay, for example, some people are crying and saying, God, where's my mom and dad? Where's my mom and dad? I'm in orphanage. I'm alone. And God says, listen, wait, wait. Mike and Jerry, they are your answer. They will come and pick you up from the orphanage. You see? So they take responsibility and they become an answer. So God has spoken you because you are the answer for some need. Okay, Jesus did not work with the books and motivational speeches. I will teach you how to fry eggs because you're hungry. No. He would fry fish and give it to them because they had a question we're hungry he fed them he said give these old guys food they said what are you talking about did you see our bank account it's nothing there maybe two loads but he said okay bring me whatever you have fried bomb boom everything is fine banks are happy so jesus knows when he comes to a situation he becomes an answer how many jesus's did we need to receive an answer from heaven. One. Jesus doesn't need two Sergeys. He doesn't need two Charlies. Because he has spoken once. And you are already an answer. So he has spoken you to the needs of this world. What you see from those what you see. It's not because I'm so strong. It's not because I'm so smart. It's not because I speak Russian, Ukrainian, and English. It's not because, it's not. It's just because I said, here I am. Send me, not him. Send me. Did I, was I scared? Oh, yeah, believe me, I was scared. Especially when we are bringing food to, to butcher. And you know, all those crazy pictures. I don't want to even repeat. And, you know, I told my guys, guys, I will follow the, th I will be the third car in the, in the line. Because this says mines. You know, if you go to heaven, fine, I want to stay here. <laughs> and I just follow them like this, you know. Because this says mines, mines, mines. And you don't know, there is a puddle. And you don't know if there is some mine in there. But you know that, that there is an answer. There is a food in the, in, the, in the bus that you need to bring to people who didn't eat for the whole month. So you need to become an answer. You need to become an answer. My whole thing today, what is the area of life that Jesus has spoken you to? What is that you've been silent instead of speaking? What is an example that you need to set up for your children? When you win a giant, your kids will not fight it. Otherwise, if you don't know what you're doing here, they don't know what you're doing here, what they're doing here. You know, you will pass questions instead of passing answers. 
and you need to pass answers. And more answers you will give, more inheritance your children will carry. They will speak and say, my grandpa, my great-grandpa, my great-grandma. What do you want to be spoken about you? I want my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren and all generations talk about Jesus who lived in me. I want them to know that there is an example in that, in that tree, how you call it, like the, the generational tree. Was our father, grandfather, whoever was it. He was obedient to Jesus. He took responsibility. He didn't wait. He wasn't lazy. But he would come to Lord and say, here I am. Take me. Take me, Lord. How can I help? Take me, Lord. So I want to ask you today, can you start playing? It's going to be like more cool. <laughs> can you? Yeah, just do something really cool. It's going to be, you know. I want to pray now and ask God to, to, to show you who are you in the Bible. You know, when Jesus was reading a word, he could find himself in the Bible. He knew this is about him because he's a spoken word. You are just as Jesus in the Bible. You can find yourself in the Bible because He has spoken you and He has written you on His palms and it's also in Bible. You can find yourself and you know how you'll do it? When you read Bible, your spirit says, this is about me. This is about me. This is what I need to do. This is who I am. This is what I am called to. And don't be afraid. Say yes to new things. And say yes, Jesus, I'm so happy. I'm donkey. Sit on me and write where you want. And I know that glory will come. And I will feel like I'm on a, on a horse, but I'm still donkey. I'm still donkey. And I'm so happy to be donkey and not a horse because you have chosen donkey to ride on and not on a horse. And I'm happy that I can drive you where you want me to be. This is amazing. Let's close our eyes because this is a very good place for donkeys to get together. I'm a donkey. I've always been and always be and I will die as a donkey. I mean like in my humble, I want to be as humble as I can. So that when he wants to do something, he doesn't ask. He just takes and do it. Amen? Jesus. What a beautiful church. What a beautiful people. I want to pray, Lord, that you would show my brothers and sisters what is their word inside what they need to bring answer to. They don't need to wait. Because you speak every day. You move every day. And you usually say, whom I shall send. So there is always lack of those who want to go. Would you, Lord, please tell them what is their answer that they are carrying in their heart that need to be revealed? Would you please put them all in one sentences? All together, we can change lots of things. And that calls sentences. And may your name, Jesus, be glorified. Glorified. May your name be loved with passion, with, with all heart, with all desires. May you be the, 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 the absolute center of everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Thank you guys. Thank you for giving me a chance to share with you. Thank you for supporting Ukraine. Thank you for supporting our work. And uh, I hope this is not the last time. Amen. Amen. Love you.